Today on The Joy of Editing, this is part one of a two-part series of a full edit of a Skyline image. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. It is TK Friday, again, my favorite day of the week, and I hope it is yours, too. Today's image comes to us from Marcelo Di Vincenzi, and please forgive me, Marcelo, because I'm sure I'm pronouncing your last name wrong. And as always, you can download the image as well as the PDF notes. And you'll find Dropbox links for the image and the PDF notes in the description below this video. You got to click on more to open up that description or you'll never see them. And also, if you have an image you would like me to edit on a TK Friday, if you scroll further down in the description, you'll find a contact me click on that link, contact me, and we can discuss doing one of your images on a TK Friday. I'd also like to thank every one of you who have already sent me images in for TK Fridays. And by the way, if you don't yet own the TK9 plugin for Photoshop, you can save 15% off the TK9 plugin for Photoshop along with training videos. Use my promo code DK15. That gets you 15% off of everything. Not only are you saving money, but you're supporting the joy of editing with Dave Kelly when you use that promo code DK15. So thank you all for using my promo code. I really appreciate it. Let's dive right into this edit. Uh, this image starts out in Lightroom as all my images do. I basically use a linear profile and then I click auto and I know you're probably tired of hearing me say this, but I do this every week and I just want some basic adjustments here. I want a relatively flat image going into Photoshop and then I always check the histogram to make sure I'm not clipping my white or my blacks and if I am, I'll adjust my white and black point if needed. Under detail, I'm using no sharpening, no luminance noise reduction, a little bit of color noise reduction. And then uh, lens corrections, I have checked on, remove chromatic aberrations, and enable profile corrections. And that's it. And then I right click on the image and go to edit in, edit in Photoshop 2024. But as always, I'm already there. And here we are in Photoshop, ready to get started. Now, just a couple things up front. I sent this image into Topaz Photo AI just to do a little bit of noise reduction and a little bit of sharpening. And when you get your image download, that'll already be done to it. And the other thing I did, you'll notice I have this layer called cleanup. I just cleaned up some of the tops of the skyline here. I'll shut this off. You can see some of the antennas and things are removed. When you get your image, those will be removed for you. And so I'm going to turn this back on. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and click flatten. By the way, this is a blank pixel layer. And, I'm, and I use the clone stamp tool as well as... Photoshop's remove tool to get rid of the elements I didn't want. And now I can flatten this image by clicking this button right here and we can get started. The first thing I want to do is save out a foreground channel, a sky channel, and a water channel. I want all three of those selections here saved out as channels because I know I'll be using them later on in the edit. And I like to call this setting myself up for success. It really saves a lot of time while you're editing. And if you watch my TK Friday videos, you know I first like to start out by adding balance and contrast to the entire image. In other words, making sure the sky, the water, and the foreground are all balanced out. And I do that first. And I'll be using those selections I saved out as channels to do that. But there's a little bit of an issue here in this image. Now, usually what I like to do is hold my command or control key down and click on the sky button. That saves the sky out as a channel. And then hold the command or control key down and double click the sky. That saves out a foreground. And I tried that. It did not work. It was a horrible selection. So let me click sky and I'll show you the selection I get. Okay, so if you look in close, I'm having some issues around some of these areas here. Like over here, can you see that in there? And even on the buildings here. Now, if I go into Select and Mask right now, click the s and button on my TK9 combo panel, and I tried Select and Mask, you know, I tried, you know, increasing the contrast. I also tried the radius, and then I also tried the various tools we get over here for refining the edges. But all to no avail. I wasn't getting what I wanted. And it wasn't doing a very good job. See if I paint in here. It's not doing a very good job at all. If I come over in here, it's just not good. So I just click cancel. And I thought, now what can I do? Well, the TK9 plugin for Photoshop has an answer for us. 
And that is this button right here. If you click it, you'll notice we have edit selection. We can refine our selections right here. And in this area right here, we have a lot of different tools that we can work with. I'll be working with some of these tools today. Another subtitle for this tutorial could be working with edit selection for really hard masking jobs when you know photoshop can't auto select an area and you think it would in a skyline like this but there's a lot of blue in the foreground and by the way there's a button right here the double arrow if you click it you can see the image but if you'll notice there's a lot of blue in these buildings there's a lot of blue in the sky and i think that really confuses photoshop when it tries to select the skyline out for us so i'll click this button again but you can see it you can see on the white areas right here, it doesn't do a good job and inside the buildings, but we're going to take care of that right here and fix it all up. Now, I know this is not a one button click to fix this up, but you're going to learn some skill sets here as we work with edit selection. And then the next time you get a hard image where you can't get the right selection, you're going to know what to do, how to refine that selection with edit selection. If you recall, I originally clicked on the select sky button. So with this sky selection, I want to refine this mask and save it out as a channel. Then I'll invert it and save it out as a foreground. And I'll do it all by using this edit selection panel. What I want to do here is make all of the skyline area solid black and the sky solid white. And this is where the refinement comes in. Now we need to zoom into our image. I'm going to start on the right side and then work to the left side. So if you click this button right here, you'll zoom into 100%. Hold your space bar down and then you can drag and move around your canvas. And if you click this plus again, you'll go into 200% and if you click it one more time you'll go into 300% right now I'm in at 200% and what I want to do is work on the black area first I want all these edges to go solid black and then I'll show you how we can work on the rest of the foreground area to turn it black so what we want to do is get a burn tool and we can grab this burn tool right here by clicking on it and you'll notice it has an exposure default setting of 50. If you click the drop down, you can drag this over to different settings here, or you could use your shortcut key like five for 50%, you know, three for 30%. But the default setting is 50%. And that's what I recommend starting with. And then you have a range adjustment here. It's a drop down. We're set up for shadows. That's what I recommend you use, but you can also set it up for midtones or highlights. You'll be darkening or burning. So leave it on shadows. That's what you want. And then what you can do is just you can adjust your brush size. I like to use a soft edge brush, but just start painting on here. See, if I paint up into white, it's not really going to change that white too much unless there's a little bit of gray outside of there. But I'm just going to go and start to paint on the edges here. But you see that little area right there that overshot? If I grab this dodge tool, what do you think will happen to that white up there? Well, it's set at 50% on the exposure, and you could change that as well. It's set for highlights. And there's a drop down. You could set it for midtones or shadows, and it's going to lighten. But see if I just paint over there. See, it just, that just goes away, and that tightens right up. Even here, I can come in on the edge here. But I'm, I'm going too fast. But you can see as I painted here, I made some of that area that was black start to change and go gray. But I'll go back to a burn tool and just paint over that again. You see that? And now that's good. But what I want to do is just start and go around the edges here and make sure I can get these all black. Then we're gonna go and have to fix all the white areas too. I don't wanna waste your time watching me do this entire refinement, but I'll show you enough that you'll understand exactly what I'm doing here. I'll be cutting the video from time to time. And then I'll come back and finish some areas off and show you what we do next. Like around this edge right here, I might grab an object selection tool. And this is important. See the double arrow? Click this and go back to the image. And let me see if I can object select this area right here. Yeah, see that right there? It selects it. Now, let me go ahead and click the double arrow again. Now, right here, I can just fill that in with black. And we have two choices here. I can click this button here. If you click this button right here, it gives you a default feather radius of 81.3%, which I don't want. Now, you can drag this off to point 0.1 or I can click cancel here and I'm going to click cancel here for the fill or you could use this button on the combo or CX panel click on this button and go to contents to make sure it's set up for black and just click OK and it fills that right in isn't that cool 
and then you can deselect by clicking this button right here. If you need to feather your selection, I would use this button, but if you don't, I would use this button on the combo panel. Now, right now, I still have my object selection tool. I'll click the burn button right here, and I'm back at 50% exposure on shadows. What I'm going to do is continue to paint on all of these edges. I'm gonna hold my space bar down and move over here, and even on these edges over here, I'm just gonna paint these down and grab the edges. Now I know there's some gray coming out on the outside there. That's not gonna be a problem because we'll handle that later by going to a dodge tool and I'll make my brush smaller. And don't forget to change your brush sizes accordingly. And then I can just come out here and you see start to paint that and clean that edge up just like that, okay? But again, I'm gonna continue to paint around these edges here. And then when I get to a tough area, like up here, I'll show you what to do. And down here, I'll show you what to do. So I'm going to finish doing that, and I'll get right back with you. And I am back. And I ended up uh, painting the whole way up through here. And when you get an area like this with some white, you could switch over to a black brush. So click on the black brush and make it larger. I'm at 100% opacity, and then you could just paint like that, you see? And of course, these areas here, you can make the brush larger if you want to, and just paint with black paint. But I'll, I'll show you other ways we can do this as well. But another thing I want to show you, I'm going to go back to the burn tool and I'll just start painting through here. It's only looking for shadows. The dodge and burn tool is not like a paintbrush, so you don't have to lift and then paint, lift and paint. You can just keep, you know, painting in it and it will darken more as you keep painting over a certain area. So I just wanted to point that out. And then like this area up in here, what I can do is click the double arrow and grab my object selection again, and I am in the rectangle mode. And what we can do is just kind of drag around here and see if we can grab this whole area. See, I got that whole area right there. I don't care that I didn't get over here, but what we'll do is click the double arrow again. Now we can see our image and click this button. And again, fill it with black, just click OK. And there you go, and then deselect. Now I'll continue to paint on the rest of these edges over here. Now, on this area right here, let me get started here and show you. I'm going to go back to the burn tool. And notice, I'll keep painting over a certain area. The more I paint, the darker it gets. You don't have to lift the brush as I go down through here. And I'm only concerned about the edges because this interior parts, that's no problem at all. And I'll show you how to do that. Again, as you paint over these areas and keep painting them, they get darker and darker, just like that. So let me go ahead and continue getting all these areas. And then when I get to a tough part, again, I'll stop and show you. And I am back. So I painted down the edges here. I'm going to hold my space bar down, get your hand tool, and you can drag around. You can see all the areas I've painted. I painted down here, the whole way down into here. Very easy to do. Now here's a tough area right here because there's a lot of light areas here. And remember, the burn tool was only looking for shadow areas so i'm going to have some trouble in here so what i'm going to do is with my object selection tool let's go back and go to the image so the object selection tool has something to work off of that's why i do this and i'm just going to make a selection right here and you see it selects that really nicely i tried to grab this whole area here it wouldn't work so what we'll do is let's click the double arrow again and we're going to fill that with black click ok and that's good and now up in here, I think I might be able to grab this whole area up here. Let's go back to the image view by clicking the double arrow button. And let's see if we can grab all this up in here. Now I can fill this without clicking the double arrow button. You won't see anything happen, but I'll just show you. Let me click on the fill because it'll fill inside that selection. Click OK. You don't see anything there, but when I click the double arrow again, you can see it filled that in. Now I can deselect by clicking this button on the combo panel. And then right in here, it missed some of these areas here. So what we can do is we can zoom in. Let's click the plus a couple times. Zoom in and now grab our black brush. And with a nice small brush, I'm just going to make my brush smaller. I can come up along here and just, you know, paint off those little white areas right there. I don't think it's that critical that you get these, but I'm going to do it anyway and right here. Okay, so that's it. Now I still have my black brush. I'm going to make it a little bit larger and paint right here and right there. And while I'm at it, let me just paint this off right there. There's a little dot here. I can paint that and right up in here. So we can paint with brushes. We can use burn tools. Here's a little area here. I can just paint that off. Holding my space bar down, 
we're going to go around. And don't forget, I'm going to be working on the white too with the dodge tool. So now we're over to here. This looks a little funny right here. I'm going to grab my polygonal lasso tool. If you don't find yours, you may have your lasso tool here. Just click and hold and it'll be inside this group here, polygonal lasso tool. So what I'm going to do is go back to the image and I'm going to click right here and come over to like right here, down, down, click, click, and close it off by clicking one more time. And let's go ahead and let's uh, fill that with black. Let's go back to the mask view by clicking the double arrow button. And I'll just click this button here, my combo panel. The field dialog comes up, it's set for black. Click OK, and that fills it in. And now I'll deselect here. And now I'll go back to the burn tool and I'll continue, I'll make my brush a little bit smaller, and I'll continue to just paint down along this edge. Just like that, it's really not hard. But you notice I'm staying inside, I'm not going out here. You could go out here a little bit, it's not gonna hurt anything, because it's only looking for shadows, but I like to err on the side of caution by staying a little bit on the inside, and then we'll continue to work down this way. So I'm gonna finish this off, I'll probably finish all this area off. This may be a little tricky down in here. Let's see. Well, let me go ahead, leave the video run. I'm just going to paint down through here. And I'm going to paint up in here. I want to see what this looks like. That's where this button really comes in handy. Double arrow, click it. And so I can see the areas right here. Okay, good. I see what I'm working on. So this can all go dark in here, in here. And this area right here, that's all white. That's going to be tough. So what I'll do is grab a black brush, make my brush smaller, and just be really careful here. Make it smaller than that even, and just paint very carefully, right like that. And I think I'm gonna be okay. Paint right here, I'm gonna look right here and see what that is. Click the double arrow. Okay, that is part of the building right there. So let's grab our burn tool, click on the burn tool, make my brush smaller, and just paint like right there. And just to show you, I can grab my dodge tool and I can start dodging in here and cleaning that up along there. Because that sky, and I want that 100% selected, I want it pure white. I'm gonna go back to the burn tool, but I just wanted to show you that. And now let's grab the burn tool, so I'll click on it and I'll just paint across here and here, like that, and down into here. And now I'll continue to work up the side of this building. Now, I think at the top here, let's zoom out. Let's uh, click the minus button a couple times. Go back to the image view by clicking the double arrow. Let's grab our object selection tool and see if we can select the entire top of this building right here. And yeah, we can do that. And let's go ahead and click the double arrow again. Click this fill button, click okay, and we'll fill that with black. And now we can deselect our selection. And now I'm gonna grab my burn tool and continue to work down here, make it a little bit larger and, and just keep painting over the same area until it turns to black. And over in here, and let's just paint this off in here. Now we can come over to this side. I'm gonna finish this side off and I'll show you what I do over in this area. I didn't finish this yet, but I just wanna let you know I'm still using the burn tool and I'm just going down and just painting. This area I have to paint a few times through here. I went ahead and sped the video up a little. Here I told you I was gonna stop, but I'm going. So now that I'm here, let me go ahead and see what we got right here. Now let's see if we can grab that whole area with the object selection tool. So let's go back to the image view. Let's grab the object selection tool and let me see if I can get this whole area right here. I get most of it and I think that's gonna be okay. So let's go ahead and let's just click our fill button and it's set for black, click okay. Now we don't see anything here. Let's go back to the mask view by clicking the double arrow. And yeah, we got all that. And now let's deselect it. Missed a little spot up here, I can get that. But let's come down in here. Let's go back to the burn tool and make my brush a little smaller and we'll just burn this right like so. And I'll go to a black brush. I have a little tiny brush and I'm just gonna paint on that little dot right there. And that's good. And while we're at it, let's just switch over to the 
dodge stolen. Now you can switch back and forth, no big deal. And it's only looking for highlights. So let's come and clean this all up in here and let's clean up over in here. We want this all nice and white. And while we're at it, let's just go up with that dodge tool. And I'll make it bigger and we can just paint and just come up into here, up into here. Let's go across here. I was going to save all this to the end, but while I'm at it. I'll just do it coming across. We don't want any gray up in here. We just want this to all be white. So we get a really good sky selection. And while we're at it, let's come down into here. I know I didn't finish this area here, but I'm just going to stay on the edge. Okay. And this area right here, I'll just show you what we could do. We can grab a lasso tool or let's just grab the polygonal. So let's click the polygonal tool. So you, what you do with this is you just find a spot, you click, and then you drag and you see that line follows you. So I can then click again and that line gets set. Click again. Come down here, click, come over, click, up, click, and click one more time to close it off at the end. And then just click the fill button on the combo panel. It's set for black, click OK, and just like that, and now deselect. I noticed when I was dodging over here, I missed some of this. This is not pure right here, so let's go back and grab our dodge tool. I'll make my brush a little bit larger, and let's just paint through here a little bit and make that turn white. Holding the space bar down, we can drag around and see what we've got so far. I have to fix some dodge areas up here. I got to lighten them up, but we'll get them. And we're down around here. This is going to be a little tricky area. I'll show you how we do that. But for now, let's go ahead and fit the screen by clicking this button right here. And let's grab our polygonal lasso tool. And let me click, pull down a line, click. Drag up here and click, click, and click. Close that off. And now if I hold my shift key down, I can click here and here. Come down, click, click. So you just click and drag and close that off. And now I'm going to add another point right here. So click. I'm holding my shift key down the whole time, by the way. Coming up and clicking, clicking, and clicking. You get the drift, right? Now I could come here. I'm still holding down my shift key. Click, click, drag up, click, click and maybe here and click and so now all that is selected so we could come and click on the fill button on the tk9 combo panel or the cx panel whichever you're using make sure your contents are set for black if not click the drop down and make sure you click on black and click ok and so that's all filled in and now we can click this button to deselect and let's see what we're going to do next we're almost done with the foreground so this will be a little tricky here it's not going to be that hard though so what we're going to do is let's click the double arrow and see what we got here. Okay, so we have this building here, here, and here. And then we got all this stuff up in here. So let's go ahead and click the double arrow again. Again, we're going to go with the burn tool. And I'm just going to start painting across here. Again, I'll switch back and forth from time to time just to see what I'm doing. Okay, I got that right there. Okay, so this right here. Just painting there. And I'm just painting across several times now. I'm looking right here just to get my bearings. Okay. So the building ends like right, I think, like around here. And down into here. Over here. And again, I'm just painting and painting. And this area right here. That's a little bit of a roof. I'm going to stay away from that. I don't think I need to get near that. I think that'll blend okay. So I'm going to really stay down in here. I'm going to get all this in here. And then continue to work across here. And in, a, in other words, I'm still just painting and painting and painting. These are little balconies or something coming off there. So I'm going to stay away from those and around up in this area here. I might just paint up here a little bit, paint across here, paint this all in, but take your time. It's well worth doing this, to be honest with you, because you're going to get a really good selection. So I'm looking right there. I'm just going to paint down through here. Smaller brush painting along here. And let's look over here. Okay, so right here and here. Click the double arrow again. So right up in here and this little thing right up in here. I think this is going to be okay. 
I think that's going to be all right like that. Let's paint across here one more time. And I think that's good. And now what I'll do is grab my dodge tool. And now I'm going to lower my opacity to like maybe 20%. And it'll just take more painting as I go through here. So I'm just going to paint through here. And I'll show you how we can come back. I may not get this solid weight down in here. And I'll show you how I can come back and touch this area up in a little bit. I'm gonna let that go white down in there, up through here and up through here. Make sure this is all white. And again, I'm just painting, painting, painting till I can get this sky as light or white as I can because that is the sky selection. And keeping a light hand, I'm not getting this perfect down here because I'll show you how I can come back and fix this area. And then I'm going to continue to work up the side of this building. I'm just looking for all the white areas. And again, I'm painting and painting and painting. I may speed the video up here a little bit for you. I sped the video up. Now I'm still using that dodge tool and I'm cleaning up all my edges. And I'm just looking for areas that are not solid white and trying to get those to turn as white as I can. Sometimes I'll switch back to the burn tool just so, you know, I might see a spot that I missed like right there. And I fix it. Now I'm back to the dodge tool down in here. And again, I'm continuing to paint. Now, this takes a little bit of time. But when you're all said and done, you're going to be happy because you're going to have a really nice selection. And if you watch my TK Friday videos, I'm always selecting skies and foregrounds. And Photoshop usually does a really good job doing that. But this time it failed me. So when it fails you, you got to think. What can I do to get a good sky and foreground selection? And the edit selection tool is the way to go. Now I have zoomed out and I'm continuing to work on the sky and the foreground as needed. All right, at this point, I think I'm done. So what I need to do right now, I have a sky selection. So the sky is white, it is selected. So what we can do is on the edit selection panel, click save. And what we want to do is type in sky and click OK. We'll save that as a channel. And then what we're going to do is come back to the edit selection panel, click this button right here, which will invert everything. And now we're going to click save again. And now the white area is the foreground. So we're going to type in foreground. And now we have a foreground selection. So I'll click OK. And now we can X out of here. And we still have a selection you can see by our selection indicator. And now we can click this button to deselect. And now we're ready to adjust the sky and the foreground. Now, in this video, this video has gotten long, so this will be part one of this edit. It took a while for me to really show you how to use that edit selection, and I did want to take the time because I think it'll be beneficial to you out there. I didn't want to skimp and go through it really fast. I wanted to take my time and really explain and give you value when you watch my videos. I'll finish this video by doing balance and contrast on sky, foreground, and water. And then next week, we'll complete the edit. We'll go up to step five in my PDF notes. So I'll just give you the first five steps in the PDF notes this week. And then next week, when I finish off the edit, I'll give you the rest of the notes. If you look at my channels, you see I have a sky and a foreground now. And now what we need to do is select out the water. So to do that, we're going to grab the object selection tool. We're going to make sure we have object finder checked on and click this button here to refresh. And now we can hover over different objects here. So we're going to hover over the water. I'm going to click that one time that selects the water. If you'll notice it grabbed this area right here. So hold your option or alt key down and just drag a selection around there and I am in the rectangle mode and that takes it out of the selection. And now we need to save that as a channel. So on the combo or CX panel, click this button right here and we'll just type in water and click OK. And now we can see we have sky, foreground and water. And now we need three color grading layers, one for sky, one for water and one for the skyline in the foreground. So what we'll do is come up and click on the luminosity mask button on the multi mask panel. Click on midtones three just to protect shadows and highlights from clipping. I'll put that to a color grading tool. So there's one color grading tool. Click this button. You'll duplicate that layer. There's a second and one more time. Here's the third. On my notes I say on the middle layer, we're going to use that for the sky. I'm not going to use a midtones three because the tones are all even there and we're not going to use it. So what we're going to do is 
click this button right here. This will delete the layer mask and we could click it one more time and put a white layer mask back there. I'll be placing my sky mask in there. And now we'll do the balance and contrast on the buildings in the foreground. So let's click the first color grading tool, make it active. Let's open up our mask calculator. Now hold your command or control key down and click on the mask calculator to keep it open. You can click X to close it anytime you want, but this way it won't close after we use it. And what we want to do is click on foreground, click X to intersect so that intersects it with that MIDS 3 mask. And now we need to go and subtract out the water. So click on water and click minus and the water gets subtracted out. And now let's balance and contrast out the foreground building. So what we can do is click on midtones, and I wanna lighten them up, so we're gonna drag this slider to the right, over to right there, plus 53. And I wanna give them a bit of a warm color grade. Now you see my cursor there, we can click this anywhere we want in this color wheel, and we can color grade it. But I have a number in mind, I'm gonna click right here and highlight this field, and grab the hex number off my notes. And that is A39B77. And then click this button to accept that color grade. And now we'll click on the shadow button. And I want to darken up the shadow. So we'll drag this slider to the left over to right there, minus 30. And now let's click on highlights, the highlight button. And I want to open up the highlights. I'm going to drag this over to plus 38. I'll shut this layer off by clicking the eye. Here is the before and here is the after on the foreground buildings. And now let's click on the middle color grading layer and work in the sky. Now it has the white mask and the reason I left that as a white mask in case I have to edit that mask and I have to do some dodging, I want that to be pure white or else it will not give me the results I need. I'll start out with the midtone, so I'll click on the midtone button. And I just want to darken up the midtones a little bit to like right there, a minus 12. Now you'll notice the entire image got the darkening. That's because I forgot to use my mask calculator, but no problem. All I need to do is this, click on sky and then click on this button to apply the sky. And now it's only on the sky. So I'll shut this off. Here's before and here's after. Okay, I'm not done yet. I'm going to go and color grade this a little bit more into the blue, like somewhere right around here but I'll get the hexadecimal number off my notes to get it just the way I had it. So I'm gonna click here and highlight this field and type in 494D78. And then we can click this button right here and there is the color grade. And then I wanna click on the highlight button to adjust the highlights. And I'll drag this to the right over to right there, plus 35. So let me shut off my sky. Here is my before and here is my after. Now let's go ahead and zoom in. My zoom button is hidden by the mask calculator, but I have my CX panel opened up here for actions. I can click X to get out of my actions and click my 100% button, hold my space bar down and we can look around here. In fact, let's go into 200%. I'll click the plus, that'll get us into 200% and we can look around our edges. And everything looks good. I might need to do a little work down around in this area here in the sky. But around the buildings, everything is looking really, really good. So all that work paid off around all these critical areas around these buildings. And here looks really nice around this building and down in here, really good. But let's come over to this area and I'll show you how we can work on this area right here. Now, I need to get to my multi-mask panel. The color grading tools in the way, we can click X. Nothing changes here, by the way. We use this button to edit the selection, but we can use this button to edit a layer mask. So we'll click on that. And you'll notice we have a lot. And in fact, I think all the same tools are in here that were in edit selection. But now we're working directly on the mask. And if we click this button here, we can see that mask, right? And click it again, we can see the image. So what I wanna do is some of these areas down here, I want a little bit more of the blue from the sky. So we can click on the dodge tool. And again, what we can do is we can leave it in this view and just paint like here. See that, I can bring that blue in, isn't that cool? And down into here, bringing in that blue, I can paint across here, but I think we're good. So now let me go ahead and click this button to fit the screen. Now I'm still in edit layer mask mode. So if I click this button, we can see our mask. And the reason I did not put a mid three on here is because I wanted this white. So it would have had more of a gray look, a light gray look to it, but I wanted that pure white. So when I painted down in here, I might've had some issues without having pure white. That's why I did that. So now we'll click this button again. And now we can click the X to get out of the layer mask mode. Now, when I was dodging right in this area, I had the image view because remember, 
I'm only affecting the very highlights, not shadows or anything. So I could see exactly what was happening as I was painting. So that's pretty cool. And now we just have to balance and contrast out the water and we'll be done for today for part one. And then next week, we'll finish this full edit off. Let's go to the top layer, click on it, and now we're going to balance and contrast out the water with the color grading tool. Now, we don't have the color grading tool, not a problem, just click this button on the multi-mask panel, there's your color grading tool. Now, what we need to do is, we gotta get the water into this Midtones 3, so let's click on water, and what we're gonna do is intersect it. So click the X, and that intersects the water with the Midtones 3 mask. So let's start out with Midtones. We'll click on the Midtone button, and I want to slightly lighten them to right there, a plus six, not much. And I do want to do a little bit of a blue color grade. I'll just grab the hexadecimal number off my notes. So I'll click here and highlight this field. And that number is 717983. And then I'll click this button to accept it. And there's my little bit of a blue color grade there, not much. And now I want to darken up the shadow, so I'll click on the shadow button and darken those up a little bit to, let's say right here, minus 33. So let's click this eye to shut this layer off. Here is the before and here is the after. Now let's see the overall before and after. Now my combo panel is hidden by my mask calculator, so I'll click the X to close it and click my before after button. So we started out here and we end up here and we're off to a really good start. Now next week I'll conclude this full edit you're gonna have the PDF notes for the first five steps and hopefully you'll get to this point and then next week we can finish it off and then you could finish it off yourself on your own and get some good practice. But practice with that edit selection, I think it's a skill, something that you'll be happy that you've learned and just play around and see how those tools all work in edit selection. Well, there it is, everyone. Please join me next week for part two, the final part of this full edit of this Skyline image. If you enjoyed today's tutorial, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. Well, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.